There's a football team in the EFL system that deserves a little bit more respect, I would say. So, this team, I feel like a lot of modern fans know them for Tony Pulis and for Rory Delap and for long throws and for Ryan Shawcross and for physical football. But Stoke City are one of the most, if not the most, historical team within the EFL. Just look at the first ever football league season i've shown this graph a few times in a few of my videos but um as you can see there look sadly stoke finished bottom yes but they got re-elected the next year meaning that they were able to play um in the football league the next year as well but not just that look at the oldest teams in england sheffield fc claim to be the oldest team in england i've covered them before hallam fc i've also covered them before they have the oldest continually used ground in england then there is also Notts county who who are older than Stoke, but they are in the National League. Then you have Stoke City. So the fact that Stoke were formed in 1863 means that they are the oldest club in the English Football League, the top four divisions of England. This is going to be a fascinating video. I've loved covering the history of loads of different English teams since I've been down in England. I've got more to come as well. So please hit that like button, subscribe so you don't miss out on any more teams and put your teams in the comment section below. Let's go and explore Stoke and find out more about this incredible old football team. The Potteries Museum and Art Gallery. It's just my luck that I come on Tuesday and <laughs> it is open Wednesday to Saturday and Sunday. So no Monday, no Tuesday, sadly. This is the only day I could come to Stoke, but the Potteries Museum behind me, Stoke, the football team known as the Potters, and uh, it is because of the industry within Stoke. Obviously we have like Sheffield where it's the blades, the steel industry, um, but in Stoke it is um, the pottery industry, which was massive here um, in sort of industrial times and stuff. And just look at the people up there look, making clay pots and stuff. Um, I think most people know, who know their football, know that this is sort of the area for that kind of industry. So we're in Staffordshire and the population of Stoke is around 250,000 people, so about a quarter of a million. So it's a fairly big place, um, the city of Stoke. But whenever I drive past Stoke, whenever I go from the south of England up, up to either Scotland or the north of England, I always drive past Stoke. Is it considered the Midlands? or is it considered the north? It kind of straddles a bit of both, doesn't it? It's only an hour away from Liverpool where I've been staying the past few days, um, and it's only about another hour, I guess, maybe to Birmingham, maybe a little bit less actually, but um, yeah, we've got all these like sculptures of amazing people from Stoke. Who do we have here? Reginald J. Mitchell, CBE. He was designer of the Spitfire, born in 1895, and I guess he was from Stoke, much like an author around there, and someone who stood up for um, the industries of, of the city over there as well. But yeah, look, here we go. Little bits of Stoke here. We have legends, but there's a place where Stoke City's old stadium used to be, where there are a lot of nods to other legends of this area, but it's all related to the football team. There's a bit of an air of controversy around Stoke's actual formation date. In 1863, that is what Stoke think it is. Look, look at their badge. Um, in 1863, they were formed as Stoke Ramblers. In 1878, they changed their name to Stoke Football Club. And in 1925, they changed their name to Stoke City. So there's been a few name changes, maybe one or two mergers of clubs back in the early 1800s as well. But essentially Stoke, or the first sort of team that were Stoke Stoke Ramblers were formed, as you can tell by the badge in 1863. And do you notice anything? Look at these houses, a little bit older, and um, they've probably been here a lot longer than these ones that you can kind of start to see up this way here. So this is the new housing estate whereby Stoke used to play. This would be their old ground would have been around here. And all the street names are named after former players, managers, and legends. But look here, yeah, as you can see, look, that would be the houses of the old original people of Stoke. And then here are the newer builds built upon what once was a football stadium. Before I take you round what is now a housing estate that was the Victoria Ground, the home of Stoke City, I want you to look at this. This is my favourite part of the video. I know I said this in the olden one, but I really, really do love to look at the league history 
of these clubs I investigate. As I told you, look, Stoke were one of 12 founding members of the Football League from 1888. They struggled in their first two seasons, finishing bottom on both occasions. But look, as you can see in those very early days of Stoke playing league football, there's a gap. In 1890, Stoke failed to be re-elected and joined the Football Alliance, which was a secondary sort of league competition. They won that and were re-elected again to the Football League. So in the early days, in the 1800s, you didn't really get relegated. There wasn't a second division until I think five years of there being a first division. So there wasn't really anything to get relegated to. If you did really badly, you'd have to go up for re-election and there'd be other clubs who weren't in the Football League who also wanted to get elected as well. Stoke spent the next 15 seasons after their re-election in the first division and reached the FA Cup semi-finals in um, the late 1800s as well before being relegated in 1907. But as you can see, there is another big gap between then when they went down, had a season in the second division and World War One. They went bankrupt and entered a non-league football system playing in the Birmingham District League and Southern League until 1914 when the First World War meant the Football League was suspended for four years. During the wartime period, Stoke entered the Lancashire Primary and Secondary Leagues. When football recommenced in 1919, Stoke rejoined the league, as you can see, look, where they have been ever since. And like I was saying earlier, is Stoke the North? Is it the Midlands? I mean, when they went into the non-league system, um, when they went bankrupt in the 19-teens, they went into like the Birmingham League and the South League. So are they North, are they Birmingham? It's hard to tell. Frank Su Street, he was the first player of Chinese origin to play in the English Football League and the first player of an ethnic minority background to represent England, although that was in unofficial wartime matches. He was of mixed Chinese and English heritage. He played for Stoke between 1933 and 1945. He also managed the Norwegian national team, he managed St Auburn City as well. He managed teams like Djurgården, AIK, Scunthorpe United. So after his playing days, he went and managed a lot in Scandinavia, the Nordic countries, places like Norway, Sweden. Wow, let's see what other legends we can find. Paul Wer, who was um, a Stoke player as a youngster, he had an operation to remove a brain tumour, um, but sadly died. Um, from complications, I believe. So he was a Stoke player as a youngster, also went on to play for Macclesfield, Cardiff on loan, Stockport. Um, but yeah, kind of local Stoke lad who came through here. Really, really sad story. I've visited a lot of old stadium locations and they're not like this with the amount of um, like still football related stuff that still stands. Look at this, Bob McGregory Street. As you can tell by his name, he was a Scottish footballer who played for Burnley and Stoke and he later managed Stoke as well. He was at Stoke as a player from 1921 to 1935, and then manager from 1935 to 1952. So we spent like over 30 years at Stoke as a player and a manager. Oh my God, look at that. This one even has a plaque outside of it. They have one of the ring doorbells, so I don't want to go up too close to it um, in case it sets off like their app or whatever. But Victoria Park, the former home of Stoke City FC, this house is located on the centre circle of the former football ground of 1878 to 1997. Wow, so it literally stood on where the pitch would have been. What does this one say here? There's, what, there's three more plaques here. Check this out. Yeah, there we go. They all say the same thing. They're located on the centre circle of the old football ground. Wow. I love what Stoke have done. Like I say, I come to a lot of these places. Um, for instance, Middlesbrough had a couple of um, place names to be fair, um, but I've been to Darlington. I don't think there was anything to say the old ground was there at Darlington. Um, but look, even there, like down the end of that street, the street that runs sort of that way across there, you can see how much the old, like the houses look older than the ones here. So the ground would have been right in and around the houses of the people of Stoke. Freddie Steele Street. Freddie Steele was a young lad from this area when he was picked up by Stoke in 1933. He would play 224 times, scoring 140 goals. He even played six times for England, scoring eight goals. He scored two more goals for England than he even played games. And another one, right next to Mr. Steele there, is Mr. Bowyer, Frank Bowyer. 398 appearances, 137 goals for Stoke from 1937 to 1960. Wow, he played there for a hell of a long time at Stoke. Roy Henry Brown, Roy Brown Street. Roy Brown was an English professional footballer who played as centre half and a striker, a bit of a Dion Dublin. But Brown was the first black player in the history of Stoke's first team. His brother would even become the Lord Mayor of Stoke-on-Trent. So a really big, well-connected family, I guess, in Stoke, but 
yep, laying the foundations for other black players who would later go on to play for the club. I will be taking you down to the current home of Stoke City in just a second. We'll be talking about them on modern history and of course some other legends who aren't named as streets here, I don't think, but you can't come to Stoke and not mention Sir Stanley Matthews. I don't even think I've uttered those words yet in this video, um, which is a sin considering it's a Stoke video, but we will be getting on to him in just a second. There's somebody else I need to show you here um, just finally on this part. Uh, of Stoke where the old stadium used to be. Um, if I've missed out anybody or maybe somewhere where you live let me know and I'll um, come and cover it next time. But this is Mabel Smith Walk. Mabel Smith was Stoke City's oldest fan when she died. Mabel was 93 and attended almost every home and away match for many seasons since her first game in 1949. As much as we have praised the players and um, the managers and stuff, they turn up every week, they get paid, they get ad adulation for what they do, but it's people like Mabel Smith who keep these clubs going with their dedication and support down the years. So it isn't just the old stadium location where street names are named after legends of the club. Look, as you can see behind me there, the Bet365 Stadium. What was it when I was growing up? The Britannia, or I guess just the Stoke City Stadium. Um, but look, here we are now at Dennis Violet Avenue. Look, even these newer streets with all like the Volkswagen dealerships are named after footballers. Maybe not all of them, but certainly some of them. Dennis Violet, who was Dennis Violet, Dennis Sidney Violet. He was one of the Busby babes. He played for Stoke as well between 1962 and 1967, but he was one of the surviving members of the Busby babes. He even went on to play for Linfield where he won the Irish Cup. He won the second division here for Stoke and a couple of first divisions for Manchester United. Alex, mate, lovely to meet you. Thank you for watching the vids. I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, I love the vids. You say you're a Leeds fan. Yeah. I'm making a video about Stoke today. What do you think of Stoke as a club? I mean, I know they've got a lot of history. Um, I've got I've got some friends who are Stoke fans, and yeah, I mean, don't Leeds Leeds fans, Stoke fans. It's not really a rivalry there, but I mean, you got to appreciate Stoke, um, what they've done, and yeah. the reputation they have. Yeah. Um, so, would you be surprised if I told you they're the oldest football league club? Top really? Four divisions, yeah. I, I knew that. I knew they were one of the. Aren't they like one of the founders? Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I, knew, yeah. I knew that, but I didn't know they were the oldest but yep so everyone thinks about the top six yeah Leeds as well and other massive clubs Newcastle but Stoke played league football yeah. years before any yeah. of them did so wow here we go look this is the main street that everyone probably knows about in Stoke and it is Stanley Matthews way this is the main street the main road which will take you right up through there and past the stadium Stanley Matthews way this is Stoke's most famous export in football I imagine he played for Stoke over 200 times, scored over 50 goals. He played 54 times for England, scoring 11 times as well. He would also go and play for Blackpool, and I believe he was the first player to ever win the Ballon d'Or. He won the second division at Stoke twice as a player in 1933 and 1963. He won the second division 30 years apart. That is absolutely unreal. We talk about players having longevity these days, but to have that back in those days is just absolutely sensational. He won the 1953 FA Cup against Bolton for Blackpool, and that is known as the Matthews Final. How many other players have FA Cup finals named after them? Maybe 2006 Steven Gerrard, and maybe Stanley Matthews as well. It doesn't happen often, and he is a huge legend. There's a statue of him somewhere, and of somebody else that I need to show you as well. What a great club Stoke are. The amount of history, like I often when I come make these videos struggle to find like little things to talk about to show you not just at the stadium but at different parts of the city or the town that I'm in as well but even just the fact that this is Den Dennis Violet Avenue and we've seen so much of Stoke as well um, in terms of the potteries and their old stadium and now all the stuff at the new one as well it's absolutely mad I love a bit of Stoke the Stoke fan we met at Belfast. Belfast, St Mirren, <laughs> St Mirren Linfield. Yeah. We did not meet at St Mirren. Oh mate, no That's way. The, you do your blog again, are you? I am, I'm doing a Stoke <laughs> video today. So we Brilliant. met at St Mirren Linfield in the summer. Linfield, that's Wow, it. I remember meeting you Stoke fans. Because we were at the front, we yes. to the front team. Yeah, I remember, yeah, you were ground hopping, weren't you, with your mates? Yeah. I'm making a Stoke video today. Did you ever go and see him at the old ground, I'm sure? Oh God, yeah. What did you think about it? Well, the old ground was better, but the, my year I wanted to. Yeah, you First needed you up, needed yeah. to probably move for the facilities, but was it a yeah. better atmosphere? Oh, a hundred times better. Nice. Mate, great seeing you again. <laughs> and you, mate. Cheers, man. See you later. Uh, next. 
God, I don't know. I don't know where I'll see you next. Somewhere, somewhere soon, I'm sure. Oh my God, no way. So I went to Linfield St Mirren in Belfast in, in the summer for a pre-season friendly. And I met a few Stoke fans there in the St Mirren end, weirdly enough. And, uh, and there you go. There was one of them just driving past me there. So what a small world. Here we have another legend coming up. And I think, not this road, this is, uh, this, there he is, see you later. This is Stanley Matthews Way. I think this road here, if you were to swing around right, is Gordon Banks Street Road Way, something like that. Let's go have a quick look. It's Gordon Banks Drive and the Gordon Banks statue is just over here. So despite Sir Stanley Matthews being such a legend and playing so long for Stoke, he never actually won a major trophy here. He won a couple of like second tier titles, but he never won the League Cup, he never won the FA Cup here. And Stoke have only ever won one major trophy in terms of either the top league, the FA Cup or the League Cup. That was the League Cup. They were runners off of the FA Cup in 2011, but in 1972, they won the League Cup. And this man was in goal that day. Here we go, here's Banks holding his old gloves, which are like woolen gloves, and the World Cup trophy. So he's actually a Sheffield lad. He was born in Sheffield. OBE, former goalkeeper who made more than 600 club appearances during a 15 year career in league football and was a key member of England's World Cup winning side of course. He won 73 caps and is generally acknowledged as the greatest English goalkeeper of all time. He was named the second best goalkeeper of the 20th century after Lev Yashin and ahead of Dino Zoff. What a goalkeeper he was. Russian Yev, uh, Lev Yashin and Italian Dino Zoff. He was named the Football Rights Association Footballer of the Year in 1972. I think that's the year they won the League Cup here at Stoke. Was um, FIFA Goalkeeper of the Year and no, on no field on six occasions. Wow. He joined Chesterfield in 53, made his first team debut five years later and was sold to Leicester City for seven grand in 59. He played in four cup finals for Leicester, helping them win the League Cup in 64 before joining Stoke for 52 grand in 1967, a year after he had won the World Cup. He also established himself as England's number one goalkeeper and played every game of the 66 World Cup triumph. In the 1970 World Cup, Gordon made one of the sport's most iconic saves to thwart Brazilian star Pele. I'm sure you've all seen that save before. He was Stoke City's goalkeeper in their league uh, 1972 League Cup win against Chelsea, the club's first major honour. There you go. Gordon was still Stoke City and England's number one when he had a car crash in 72, which cost him the sight in one eye and his professional career in England. He did continue playing in the States for a little while after that accident, though. He settled in North Staffordshire and is an ambassador for not only his adopted uh, city, but also Stoke City and English football in general. And here you go. Here's the teams that he played for. So his school team and the Sheffield boys um, and then Steelworks. Royal Signals, National Service, then to Chesterfield, Leicester, Stoke, and then this is his time in the States, I believe. And look, here we go, here's all his trophies, the World Cup, and where's his League Cup? There you go, 1972 League Cup, Stoke City. Please do remember to hit that like button. This feels like it could be a, a long video. I'm enjoying filming it though, look at this. Look at this huge statue to Sir Stanley Matthews. Look, the Stoke Stadium right there. So Stanley Matthews right here. Here's some stuff about him, born in 1915. Hanley, Stoke-on-Trent. Gives you about his early life and who he played for. 758 League and Cup matches from 32 to 65. A 33 year career. He scored 71 goals, eight in Cup ties and 13 in international matches. That's absolutely unreal. His two league clubs were Stoke and Blackpool. Played that whole time just for those two league clubs died in 2000 sadly FIFA order of merit 1992 um, I'm not sure if the Ballon d'Or thing will be here anywhere I'm sure he won the first ever Ballon d'Or um, he was the first European footballer of the year I think that is technically known as the first ever Ballon d'Or winner um, and there's mosaics about him as well there's apparently mosaics one about a pottery factory see we're in where pottery is made and all that stoke strip is that one stoke badge is that one as well as a few more as well but yeah look at this wow this is just unreal i was told i wasn't meant to come this far by someone working um, up there said i couldn't come past the club shop which is miles down there because of work going on around this part of the stadium but 
there obviously isn't any um so yeah i just had to be quick there but i wanted to show you the stanley matthews statue i couldn't come and make a stoke video and not show you the stanley matthews video uh statue but yeah just look at their modern stadium now how often do we see it and how many times have i seen clubs like sunderland where i've also visited what was it roker park and uh, middlesbrough with airson park compared to the riverside and obviously sunderland with the stadium of light and all the different teams in scotland i've done it for where um you see the modern stadiums yeah it drags the clubs into the more modern era with the facilities which they need i understand it and if you look at some of the old stadiums and some of the old footage of the pitches and the old grounds and stuff in the 70s and 80s it was horrific i've seen like videos of um of brian clough saying how football fans need basically better facilities better stadiums etc and i understand why clubs move into places like this but they lose part of soul as we spoke to uh, out on the road um the stoke fan who i met at linfield um in the summer the atmosphere goes we know that highbury that's the that's the biggest one i call it emirates syndrome where for years they struggle to adapt to their new surroundings and lose a bit of atmosphere and stuff of course as you would um but yeah here we are at stoke now and as you can see from the badge 1863 england's oldest football league club so next time you think about stoke are you going to think of them as a physical football team who have been known in more recent years to knock the ball long of course styles change over time i know that um will you think of them as that and as tony pulis and as shawcross and as ricardo fuller or will you remember them for stanley matthews gordon banks and mabel smith and all the legendary other characters who have been associated with this club and who are now remembered forever through the street signs in which the uh, stadium used to stand on which the stadium used to stand please do hit that like button and subscribe if you know it'd be fantastic to see your face around here a little bit more often do remember to drop your clubs in the comment section below any other historical videos i've not yet covered and if you are fairly new to the channel then just search footy adventures and the name of your club chances are i've been there i've made hundreds of videos all across the uk so yeah i might have been there but if not drop it in the comment section below thank you so much for watching i'll leave some videos on screen please do click one to carry on watching thank you very much and i'll see you in the next one <laughs>